Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 14.5 of the Football Uncensored podcast. Um, been a bit of a delay, um, probably about three or four weeks, maybe. Um, so the first one of the 2021, hopefully 2021 is going to be a better year than 2020. Um, reason for the delay is uh, multifaceted. Uh, one is Don and Alan, uh, obviously with lockdown and the, the, the restrictions, um, we're all separated. So uh, me and John are just trying to keep the kettle boiling. Um, and having a, having, a, having a tune wag until the gang's back together and they can niche me off, um, which is correct of them to do so. <laughs> um, and uh, and, I'm fo- and and John's out from the, the quagmire and the malaise of, of COVID. So congratulations, John, you're looking healthier. Obviously, you've lost weight, but um, great to see you and you're back fighting fit. And it's, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to, to have this chat with you today. Cheers, Joe. Yeah, I appreciate that, mate. Yeah, much appreciated. I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't recommend it as a weight plan. It's <laughs> <laughs> two, two stone three pounds. So I think, I think, um, no more. Two, uh, uh, five, no, two, no, yeah, two stone five pound. Yeah, 33 pounds in weight. I've done so. I think so. It's, it's also fair to say, John, that these people that say it doesn't exist, I think you can uh, quash those rumors, can't you? <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the, the wife, my wife and children are saying, oh, you know, like your stomach's gone down, this has gone down, that'd be nice now, you get, you look slimmer, you look better, keep the weight off, but I said, well, like, I feel like weak and I feel like a bag of bones and um, I don't feel like I've got any weight or strength and it takes time and it's me Mr. Sam will just maybe do something to just put a little bit of weight back on your arms and legs. And if I could and I was strong enough, I'd say to any COVID denier, um, meet me and I'll slap you all around Wembley. You know what it's I mean? It. Because, because yeah. it, it's... I, 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 it's no I, joke, is it? It's no joke, mate, because I, I'll be truthful with you. Um, I'm, I'm, no, I'm prone to, like, babe, maybe flying off the handle. I'm, I've got to keep myself to myself. I march to the beat of my own drum. If someone digs me out, I go fucking rushing on them. You know that. Um, uh, you know, I ain't, I ain't saying it's a good thing. Um, so, you know, I'm prone to extremes. Let's say that. Um, but without being melodramatic, it's probably as close that I've ever felt to death or someone could ever feel to death without being really, really close to, to feeling, feeling close to death, as in like being hospitalised. You know, my wife and family and children were determined to keep me out of hospital, but I was literally bedridden for 12 days and I was like spark out for eight of them. And then days nine and ten, I got up to use the bathroom. Don't know why, because like there, you know, obviously there's no refuse because I hadn't been eating or drinking. And it's only like my daughter coming round and um, making sure that you know we had plenty of fresh food and, and drink. I've gone through gallons of water. Uh, my missus recovered slightly before I did, so she's waited on me hand and foot. My son's at it, but he's as strong as a ball touch wood. And then you know, my brother-in-law's on the phone screaming down the phone at me to get on the move and because it's all to do with like stuff like um, blood oxygen levels and all that. And uh, so like, listen, there, but for the grace of God. Well, exactly. What, what disappoints, what disapp- <clears throat> yeah, what disappoints me? I mean, I go into one on Twitter. Everyone knows I'll go into one about football. I'll go into one about but the government. I just think they've been like nothing short of um, really off the pace behind the game, incompetent, malfeasant, uh, poorly organized, uh, they've been reactive rather than proactive and it's all st- like sticky plaster bullshit and I look at it and I people will come on I and I don't even know you can defend it you you, you, got, you know you've got like uh, like modern um, economies modern you know latter day democracies like Australia and New Zealand they went that's it boom done no one's coming in no one's going out they've got like a total of 900 deaths um, yesterday I think we had something approaching 98,000 or well, today's 98,000 so, so you know, you're looking at like two, two massive countries like them, and how can it be right? How can it, and, and it's, it's, uh, you know, we're we're off peace because we're meant to be talking about football, but I just think it's nothing short of a disgrace, and I think it highlights the fact that we're, um, like an ATM for the rest of the world, and like a disorganised, uh, you know, third world banana republic shambles. Strong words, John. Um, yeah, like, strong. Know. Strong, yeah. harsh, but true. Yeah, yeah. You know, someone, mean, someone said, someone said, the geezer that was involved actually said, "I normally only set up field hospitals in third world countries, yeah. and here we are in this country setting up field hospitals, which don't get used, and they might need to be used." But, you know, and then there, there's um, 
there's a good chance that they should have been used and they're already dismantling it after oh, the night and then and then that, listen yeah. off i got corruption then you you got the bent tenders for the personal protection equipment oh yeah that that come it's out actually a joke i mean it? it's, it's a joke it's a, it's a scandal I mean, yeah yeah and hopefully yeah. hope the one let's let's hope although it's reactive people start pouring over all that that ppe tendering process and all that because it's a, it's a disgrace sort of under completely undermines democracy to be honest with you and it's yeah people sort of profiteering from this kind of situations is just yeah disgrace. i mean mi5 mi6 gchq the uh, white or mandarins they're five time zones beyond their own arsehole trust me the the, the, the the fucking countries are shambles it's a shambles and um my boy said well, yeah, so we don't have to edit it too much what watch what you say that's my true belief so he won't be editing this out um all right well at least we can at least the football carried on although you probably didn't get much to see it certainly at the beginning of the year yeah. But a lot's happened since we last spoke. Um, and whereas I think before last time we spoke, we were saying that, or I was saying, <clears throat> I think you agreed, that the kind of league was settling down into a normal holding pattern and leads yeah. uh, Liverpool back at, the, well, back at the top, I think, for, the, for that particular time. Man United were climbing the table. Chelsea were riding high. And uh, how things change. Because, well, Lampard's got the sack. Chelsea are really struggling. Um, Liverpool were really struggling um, so yeah it's a completely different picture really um, and Man United are back at the top whereas before they were kind of I think we should give ourselves a pat on so. the back Joe mm. to be truthful with you um, I've only had one brief call with you I think we should give ourselves a pat on the back as a group because all the stuff I mean uh, Lord Hudson um, he, he, he wanted Ollie's head on the chopping block and 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 I'm I'm I was the uh, well shock horror probe. I was the voice of reason. The advocate. You had Don speculating it, and uh, you had you had Lord Hudson calling for his head. And I said, you know, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I think he's handled this well. He's handled that well. Um, I think he's he continued to be given time. I think he's managing it well. And then it's like crisis. What crisis? They, they went from so, wherever to third, and now they're they're, <laughs> they're up the top. Then the other the one. The league, yeah. Yeah, the other one. Really and truly, I'm I'm made up for him, and I and I'm pleased with what I said on previous podcasts, which hopefully people will get involved and carry on watching. You know, like, subscribe, etc., and recommend us. I was talking about John Stones, and then I'm I'm absolutely made up to see the renaissance of John, uh, John Stones because I said sometimes all it takes is the realization that you're at a massive club. The only way is down. It's a different element in terms of fear factor, uh, which does. Um, exist in the game but I said what he's got to get back to is like basic uh, doing the basics well maybe saying to one of the coaches can you come and do 20 minutes with me on my own or can you could put a little session on for this this and this so you look at him now he's looking like a bona fide proper top draw centre back his decision making's yeah. better um, he's not putting the ball at risk which he was doing ridiculously uh, uh, on a ridiculously uh, regular basis not putting the ball at risk in bad areas and, and he seems to be in the right place at the right time and he's getting surfaces to the ball and he's clearing it when it needs to be cleared. And I think he's now um, England's outstanding centre-back. Yeah, and it just shows you, like, just got to see, I know you mentioned before about going away on a training ground and doing your own individual sort of sessions, really, just to build your confidence up. But it does seem like as soon as that confidence thing, it'd be interesting to get your insight into the effect confidence can actually have on a player and why... Almost in John Stone's case, his confidence was obviously low, you know, a few months ago. But actually, that that manifests itself in take not just making the wrong decisions, but making riskier decisions. His confidence now improved, and he's making less riskier decisions, which seems counterintuitive to me. Is could, could you give an insight into? Have you gone through periods where yeah. your confidence gone, and and how how? Does it just take one thing for your confidence to come back and then everything floods through? Or is it a real slow, incremental burn and challenge to get back to it? Yeah, I think you're right what you say. I think it's um, it's incremental and it's normally done over a period. <clears throat> like for me, what I used to enjoy doing was um, making sure I was on top of the basic stuff. So getting my timing and my spring right. So um, not that I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've never, even from a, even for me height, which was deemed when the honey monsters came in, I was deemed like too small as a centre back, just over six foot. But I used to do things like the, uh, you know, make like a thousand skips a day, and then like hang the ball from the under the stand and getting the bump one two spring punch, 
Um, and then like at the training ground after, just little stuff, control uh, at your feet, across your body, play with the other foot as if you're doing a clearance, then control across your body, out your feet with the other thing and with the other foot. And then maybe just like one touch clearances, getting a surface to the ball, then a bit of marking and retreating in the box, then feeling a, a body, maybe getting a youth team player. So like, you know, the crosses are going to come in because like this is the session, you just try and get on the end of them and score. Mm. Then it was up to me to get in his body line and Stop get first it. contact on the ball, that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then what happens, you carry that in, on into the game and then you grow. I mean, I remember, I remember a crisis of confidence uh, as a kid and uh, Daryl Grady pulling me in, he just said, what you do, you don't. And this, this ties in a little bit with what you're talking about with Stones and the way he went. What happens is if you have, you try to play too, too cool for school, you try to play uh, like like daddy call where you end up like he did, becoming over elaborate, putting the ball at risk, trying to be too clever, trying to be too intricate. And then uh, like Dario said to me, you're trying to like get it a thing and run it in there and then like drop your shoulder and maybe pass it over there and in there and round now. And then when it don't come off, you're like, you know what I mean? So mm, you, see what you, do? Mm. you get back to basics. Back you get to back basics, to the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You break it up, pass it simple. And then maybe the next one, yeah, hold on, uh, you know. When I, when I got to the first team, it was like um, the same thing happened again. But the the moral of the story being, um, what you don't do is you don't uh, rule of thumb. If you're in a hole, stop digging. Yeah, so I think I think that's what John, John Stones has done. Yeah, you need to almost complete refresh. Stop. Yeah. Actually, stop what you're doing. Like a new signing. Re- it's been yeah. be, like what I've seen the last couple of weeks. It's been like a new signing. Yeah. Yeah, and he's keeping Laporte out the side. Laporte was probably one of the first players on the team sheet a few months ago, and now he can't get a game. So it is remarkable what he's done, because there's big, you know, Diaz has got a good partnership with him, but there's a lot of competition in, in that position at Man City. Yeah. It's not just he's the only one left. I mean, you look at, it's not like Liverpool, for example, where there is no centre-offs. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's an underlying factor <clears throat> at the end of the day, Joe. But in, in professional football, what you do is... Um, you look after yourself first. Mm. So, so what you do, you take care of your own form. You take care of the, and and I, I realised it probably uh, too late. It was too late. Any 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 big chances I had, um, I didn't realise they were big chances until they'd slipped by. Yeah. But the, but the, that that comes with experience. The bottom line is, what you do, you look after yourself first, and then you you get in a, a site, you get in a unit within a side, and then you make sure that like you you're part of a decent unit. And then help other units to help form a decent side. I when you think say the, units, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by unit? Like a, a back, back four unit, or you and yeah. Some other well, in my case, in my case, yeah. yeah in Stones' yeah. case, yeah. I mean, yeah. like what you do, you know, you're um, probably the probably the best I knew it was um, in terms of like uh, a plan of definitely plan. I mean, it's, it's the, the game is just like uh, a lot of it's fate. A lot of it is like circumstance, etc. In terms of like planability and people, you know, square pegs, etc. Uh, round pegs and round. I'd say the, uh, the best two back fours I played in were uh, late or in, in the promotion season and at Gillingham. And, and like Mickey Adams at left back and me, Steve Bruce, and then normally Johnny Sharp, ex Southampton at right back. And uh, decent players with decent ability. With uh, It's all about habits. Yeah. And, and and then like what you do, you, you get a feeling amongst yourself and you start bossing each other and helping each other. But you can't get to that stage until you take care of your own shit first. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Your own game, you've got to be on blob with your own game mm-hmm. before you can start bossing uh, and pointing. And- there was an interesting chat on, I like listening to Monday Night Football with Carragher and Neville. And, and basically Neville did a, he was doing an analysis really between where Man United are and why they're not quite, uh, at the same level as Liverpool and Man City at the minute. And what he identified was actually the, the centre-halves or the back four not being aggressive in pushing up and still pushing up quite slowly and hanging back and playing deep and letting letting you know the opposition come on to him a little bit. And he pointed to Man City and Liverpool, although Liverpool are struggling, but specifically Man City, how aggressive they are at pushing up, how aggressive they are at squeezing the play and how brave they are at leaving space behind them. I wondered when you was playing in them units and it was, like you say, you was on blob and you was playing well and it was a solid unit. Was you being told by the coaching staff, squeeze up, squeeze up, squeeze up, squeeze the play, condense the play? Or did you almost 
do it yourself? Or is it a mixture of the two? You know, in terms of how you, what, what, you know, how deep you were and, and, and basically how you defended, you know, how important is a defensive coach in that? Or is that just, if I could the team's take, confident? I could, listen, Joe, unlike Carragher, uh, I could take a look a little bit of what he said because he's... It was actually Neville, but yeah. Yeah, no, no, listen, yeah. what I'm going to say, I could, yeah. I was going to say, I could take a little bit of what Neville says over over Carragher talking about Lampard taking things too early at Chelsea Blob and taking the job too early. So I could take a little bit more of what he says, even though it would seem that, uh, you know, sky p- punditry comes with a crystal ball, right, which I'll come to. But I could take a little bit more of what he says because he's put his head on the chopping block to um, try and be a coach and yeah. or a manager at Valencia, um, e- e- even though uh, wrong circumstances and um, it turned out that on paper he failed miserably. Um, but I could, yeah, I've got time for anyone who's actually uh, had a go at it and, and knows what it feels like to, to basically run a football club and, and or put on the session. But in answer to what you're saying, um, he don't know unless he unless he's been told for, uh, and had ins- inside information from someone in the club because it's his he's he's a one club man and it's his ex club. You don't know um, because from week to week, my personal opinion, you can drill and have a, a defensive strategy like we had. We're a magnificent organisational coach like Brian Eastick at Leighton Orient, uh, as well as that the uh, Kevin Campbell being the catalyst for getting us up. But um, our strategy was based on um, what Terry Venables invented at Barcelona, brought back to QPR. Uh, George Graham was on the verge of taking a pub and he rung Venables, who was an ex-Chelsea teammate, uh, with regards to getting a job and he gave him the youth team coach's job. And I was still at Millwall when this was going on. And I remember George bringing a youth team over, a QPR youth team over, and the bottom line is, uh, the, uh, the point being, in terms of defensive strategy, what they did, they um, they drew a line from the corner flag quadrant on each side, and then they they drew a line towards their own penalty spot. And what it was, it was a case of shutting the lines off and forcing the ball inside. And then it's about how you coach uh, affecting the first touch. It's about the recovery run of the second, third, fourth player. How well the first player defends to force the ball either backwards, preferably, or sideways, and then getting up to the ball and then in turn forcing it back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So, um, without showing you, which I'd love to do on the on the training field, uh, that was their strategy. Then what happened was he stick nicked it, and we used it in the thing. So, in answer to that point, it was a case of us being um, very well drilled, very well organised, and imposing our will on the opposition on where they would go, where they could go, and where they couldn't go, right? Now, where... where can I ask a could... question on that? Can I ask a quick question on that? Does that yeah. can, you, can you be confident and impose your will on the opposition if, you, if you're deep? Well, again, that, depend, that depends on um, your own defensive strategy. Our, our okay. one, at that particular time under East Stick, because we can come to this with regards to Liverpool, which is where I think they've been sussed out a little bit, hmm. right? Um, with regards to East Stick, what it, what it was about, it was about... And for me, it's a no-brainer. I mean, uh, Liverpool did it with Ian Rush. And then I was doing it 25 years ago with my Sunday team, my youth team, and then later on, Leighton Orient's first team, uh, with regards to pressing from the front and trying to pinch the ball back on the edge or in, you're attacking third. It makes sense to try and win the ball back as soon as possible and then hit them on the rebound because you're very, very close to the opposition's goal. That's that's a no-brainer. That's in layman's terms. You know what I mean? The Gunga press, they call it now, don't they? But yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know why yeah. because it's been going on for nearly it's been going on for thirty years. I mean, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what that's about. But then um, in layers, what they now call the second press, well, it ain't, it ain't the second press. It's just a press. It's the, if the first person gets played round or eliminated, the next one's got to go in, and then and then it's about how you it's set up gladiators. Yeah. yeah, well, it's, it's how you set up with regards to uh, recovery runs, and how you set up with regards to. Uh, if you did a session in a small-sided game, it would be meant to, went to mark players, went to mark space. So it's a bit like it's about working your way back from the person who's pressing the ball, um, and how you space off from there. Um, what we were trying to do, we would try and condense the play and keep it as high up the field as we possibly could. Uh, there are some opponents where we come up against Crystal Palace in the League Cup, and then um, the management had changed hands. It was now Peter Eustace, and he rang Ray Harford for advice on how to approach the game because they'd been knocked out the previous round. And he said, well, if I could have my time again and if I could uh, plan it all over again and uh, set out a strategy all over again, he said, what I would do, he said, I would uh, defend a little bit deeper this time. He said, and uh, deny the space in behind. So what happens is the opposition run out of grass. 
to play the ball into and to run into. So what happened was that night he set out with me as a sweeper, uh, Adrian Whitbread and Keith Day either side of me, and we gauged the depth, or I did absolutely perfectly, spot on. We drew nil-nil at Sellers Park, got them back home, drew nil-nil at home after extra time, and then second replay, we won the toss, uh, but lost at home in the last minute of extra time from uh, a wonky header from Mark Wright. But the uh, the point being, there's two ways. You can either, um, my personal preference, defend high up the field and impose your will that way in terms of your strategy and placement of players backwards of the first person pressing the ball, or you can defend a little bit deeper, denying the space in behind. What, what I've always found lacking, or I've never quite been able to bridge the gap <clears throat> between Neville's obviously played top, top level, you know, about as elite as you can get in terms of professional football. And he's been a manager. One of life's lucky boys, though. Yeah, but just... <clears throat> just decent, these... A decent athlete, uh, yeah. seven out of ten every week, dependable, reliable. Job he, had done. It, he had it up there, though, didn't he, to be fair to him, I would say. Good, good mentality. Over and above uh, ability. But what I was going to say was he is talking about really a kind of innate, slight lack of confidence in the Man United defenders, which is why they're dropping deep. Now, what I've always struggled with, with punditry, and this is what I want to ask you, is they all talk about individuals like he's lacking in confidence or he shouldn't have made that run or he should attract him back or why is he part, why is he playing out from the back? Why is he hitting them passes? And they're sort of individualising the game and they're, 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 they're criticising or they're, they're critiquing things that happen that players do. What I've always not got the... You very rarely hear someone say, well, he done that wrong, but he might have been told to do that. He's probably been told to do that. As in... That would be the, my point. That would be my it's point. It's like... Picking up... Listen, picking up on what no. Neville said, right? Yeah. He's got, unless, unless he has, right? Um, which if he has, it would be wrong. He, he should have... He'd have absolutely no knowledge on what Man United do in training. So mm. it might be a case of they haven't been drilled to play that way. They might have been drilled to defend a completely different way, but yeah. you can't uh, you can't legislate for individual uh, performances and errors. I mean, Wan Bissaka, um, me personally, a magnificent athlete, an absolute powerhouse, uh, used to frustrate the hell out of Zaha apparently because he couldn't get past him in training. Um, but for me, fifty million don't buy you that much these days. Um, I'm looking at him and, and some of his positional play. It's screaming out to be coached and, and for someone to help him. And that's with, before we even come to light his limited ability going forward. Non-existent. Absolutely non-existent in terms of creativity. Um, and Frank Clark, when he played me there, he thought I was rough and ready. Well, have a look at this. This is fucking £50 million pounds worth. Right, <laughs> then you've got the two centre-backs. Um, I think he's been playing with an injury, and I, but I think he's been a breath of fresh air. Is it Lindelof? Yeah. Um, and Maguire's it, come back. He's done a bit of a stones, and he? he's back. He's back. He's back on top. Who's that? Maguire. Maguire. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, he's been magnificent. I think. I think he's. Uh, he took a bit of stick from me, Lord Hudson, and the Don. And um, he's been fantastic. His mentality has been fantastic. And I think he's put all the bullshit in on the Greek island behind him. All the para- paraphernalia off the field. He's got his nut together. He's had a talking to. Don't worry about that. He's had a fucking good talking to. Right. You're Man United. You're Man United captain. You're a Man United player. Get a grip. Right. Um, and all this like 30 grand bar bills. What's a load of bollocks that is, right? If I, if I got a spare 30 grand, I'll give it to uh, one of the four charities I've always given to. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't have spunk it on a bar bill. It's obscene. But anyway, he's moved on from that and he's grown and grown and grown. Then you look at Shaw, right? Tell me, that, I mean, this is like the type of thing that managers and coaches, right? They they're, um, could cost them their livelihood. One, they play, they play Liverpool. He's absolutely magnificent. He's absolutely outstanding. He's absolutely running the gaff down that left-hand tranche, right? That third. Um, he marks Mo Salah out the game. Then you look at the other day. Magnificent game, magnificent cup tie for the... Uh, um, uh, that's like someone like me. I'm, I'm, I'm not affiliated to United or Liverpool. Neutral, I'm just watching yeah. it. Yeah, so um, Salah just... He peels away from the centre-back... You just think, how can this be happening at this level? You're, you're looking at him. You're actually looking at him. He peels he peel slightly, just like bends his run slightly and peels off the shoulder of the, of the centre-back where the ball's there off at an angle. And then, like, sure, he's, he, he's got him in his eye line. He's looking at him. He's making half a recovery run. And then Salah actually, he gets between Shaw, who should pick his run off. 
if in doubt, pick his run off and track him all the way. Or if it's a poor run, punish him with an offside. But Shaw can see him, right? And he's made the run between Shaw and the centre-back and he still gets the ball and he still dinks it over the goalkeeper for, I think, Liverpool's first goal. So you could, as a, as a, as a uh, despite what he says, Neville, even though he's been there and, and, and seen it and done it, you can't legislate as a manager or a coach for such poor uh, defensive uh, mm. decisions and poor defensive play. I'm looking, I'm thinking, well, he's looking at him. He's actually yeah. looking at him. He's actually yeah. right. He's running with him and it's almost as if he stopped and gave up or, or just thought, hey, he'll deal with it. And, it, and he just so like, draws the keeper and dinks it over him. But it's interesting, just, just about labouring the point, it's interesting you've obviously ident- identified something that would never be coached. There's no way someone would ever tell Shaw not to follow him. Obviously, that's just an innate thing you should know as a professional footballer. So that's a mistake. I mean, obviously, a few, a few mistakes. Well, the rule of thumb is this, Joe. <clears throat> Quite simply, if there's no pressure on the ball, you pick the runoff. Yeah. Right? If someone's making a run, right, there's pressure on the ball, you can afford to hold a line. Right? Um if someone makes a bad run, you can punish the bad run by it. And there's pressure on the ball by holding the line and maybe nicking an offside, which is a, is a, is a lovely little added bonus. That's the, they're the sprinkles, you know what I mean? Mm. But if there's no pressure on the ball like there wasn't, and he's making the run, right? the rule of thumb is as a defender, you pick the run off until you see it to safety. Mm. But, but it's, it's just interesting from a punditry point of view that they quite seemingly accuse players of doing something wrong when actually... It's quite, it's almost like, almost certainly, they've been told to do that from, from, from the outside. Like Man United playing deep, you know, you're not going to rely on your defenders to just individually decide to start playing deep because it can have such a, it's such a fundamental part of the overall strategy of the side. So, I think, really, I think they should be tr- criticised the management or the coaches, not not the players. Well, well if we pick up the thread, if we pick up the thread of that with Liverpool, right? I yeah. think it's a lot to do with the fact that they were playing Liverpool. I think it's a lot to do with the fact that lately. Liverpool have been had a little bit of a slump. I think it's mm. a lot to do with the fact that Liverpool have been struggling for form and they've been, maybe they've been struggling uh, to score goals because teams have sussed them out. And I think they've been um, better briefed, better organised um, and better prepared. And, How have they sussed them out then? How have they sussed um, them out? Well, well look, to put, it, to put it quite simply, I mean, I didn't see the Burnley game. I know they nicked the goal from the penalty. I know... Uh, Burnley's gone there and done the 1-0 but obviously um, I don't subscribe to any of the thing and I can I have to make do with match of the day so all I saw was something on the news they've nicked the goal blah 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 right what I will say is this <coughs> I'm not sure how they approached it what I have seen with other teams is how they've approached it and it ties in exactly with how I'll, I would approach it playing Liverpool is all about gauging your depth playing Liverpool is, out, is all about being precise specific and absolutely spot on at the optimum level of the way you defend. Now, what I mean by that is um, you could look to press Liverpool high and it would be harder to press them high with their full complement of back four players because they can play around you with great ability. Um, every, but barring the existing injuries, they, he addressed the goalkeeping area a couple of years ago. He addressed the centre half a couple of years ago. Fantastic fullbacks. So you're looking fantastic unit, right? Then you look at the midfield, another fantastic unit. Then you look at the front line, another fantastic unit. So you say, whoa, 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 how do we approach this, right? So you know with their full complement of defenders and their midfield players, if you press them high, there's a chance. If not everyone is not absolutely spot on, they can play around you. So then what you do, you may be here on the side of course and go a little bit conservative, which is how I would, and you say, we're going to stay compact, what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to concede the ball and we're going to stay compact a little bit deeper. So what you maybe do, you maybe start 10 yards inside their half. Rather than press them on the edge of their box, you invite the goalkeeper to punch it out or roll it out. Maybe set a trap or two with regards to if it is in, in, a, in a bit of a dodgy area where he hasn't got a lot of support around the ball, you can go and press him and fly in and maybe nick it. But the key is this. You stay compact and what you do you did with Liverpool, you, the, I think the key is... And it's a calculated risk anyway, because of the un- undoubted magnificent ability of people like Salah, Mane and Firmino. What you do is you deny the space in behind. So they, they, they run out of grass to play the ball into and they run out of grass to run into. That is our... say, that's exactly what happened against Burnley. That completely, right. completely well, I'm gonna, I'm, listen, I'm going to hold my hands up 100%, God's honest truth and on art, stack of Bibles, I never saw the Burnley game. 
but that I thought it's absolutely like their only chances of anyone getting a result against them. Mm-hmm. If you start flying in, da, 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 blah, 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 they're like, they go, boom, 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 boom. They play around you and all of a sudden they've got an overload. Then on top of that with Robertson and um, Alexander, um, Alexander Arnold, is it Alexander Arnold on the other yeah, side? Yeah, Magnificent, yeah. Uh, unbelievable ability with regards to their delivery and, and, and supporting uh, forward play. Um, yeah, so well, no, well, that's nice. I think I think it's he's uh, he's 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 taking a common sense approach. I think, me personally, Joe, it's the common denominator with regards to teams picking up results against them. Yeah, and it's, I suppose the other uh, thing that they mentioned on I could sort of uh, quote in Monday Night Football, but they was talking through the stats of the top teams. Actually, you, you mentioned before shuffling the decks. The top teams, Barcelona, Real Madrid, those kind of legendary sides, the last sort of ten years or so, Man United was in there for a bit. Um, by Munich, they actually they actually shuffle the decks. They either get rid of a player or they bring a player in within eighteen months, max two years. So that what well, they looked at the stats, there's never been the, the front three of one of the best teams in the world hasn't been that same front three for more than two years. Interesting. Liverpool now is beyond the fourth season of those three players yeah. together. So yeah. it's you know you talk, I mean not half their careers, but it's a substantial chunk of their careers playing yeah. together in the same team, the same system. Um, you know, so is is there a kind of natural shelf life, I guess, on these elite units, elite certainly elite forward units, where it's more about creativity. I think without a shadow they, of a doubt. Yeah. yeah, I think without a shadow of a doubt. But I think it depends what what end of the, what end of the scale you are. If you're mm. that end of the scale, you could say right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck the bone marrow out of these people. And get good to. I mean, he's been there five years now, Klopp. If he gets two or three good years out of them, right? Um, Mane, Salah, Firmino, the other guys they sold the bars at Barca for eighty-five mil, right? Then uh, what he's got to look to do is got to look to replenish and refresh, right? Failing that, if it's the same players, it's then up to Klopp and his staff to provide new ideas and a mental stimulus for the for the same front three. Otherwise, what you what, what happens? It's an inevitability. It's human nature. It's just nature. It's just what happens. They go off the boil. They go, they go, uh, they're not at their optimum level anymore because they haven't been taught new ways or uh, helped to create new ways. Or so all of a sudden, so, so he's coming in, my place is under threat. Because you had the rumblings before about uh, Salah wanting to leave. Oh, you know, what's that about? Um, I, I, I think personally now, this season, um, probably apart from bedding in his ideas before they rung the bell with a couple of free trophies, this is, this is Klopp's biggest challenge now. Mm. You know, I mean, to, to either re- re- refresh and replenish the front line uh, with new blood, uh, and/or provide a, a stimulus for the for the players who have, who have gone off the boil, because teams are sus- sussing them out slowly, slowly. I yeah. don't think it's a crisis. I don't think it's a it's a lack of confidence. I don't think it's a lack of ability. It can't be. Uh, it's like the, like the old saying, you know, um, you know, the forms temporary, class is permanent. But like, I just think teams have got to, got to grips without to uh, handle them a little bit better. I'll put you on the line then. I know we're not doing loads of predictions or, or analysis of games per se on this, but they're playing Spurs at the weekend or this week. Um, at Spurs, what do you think on that one? What, in terms of result? I think it'd be mm. a draw. Yeah, I'm sorry to sit on the fence, or it might be a narrow... No, but it, might, it, might, it might be, a, if, if, if they get it right, which, by, I mean, by rights, he's meant to be the governor, isn't he, Jose, with regards to setting teams up to it on the counter and parking the bus and blah, blah, blah. You know, he, he gets the when other teams do it, but it's all right when he does it. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the hypocrisy of football. I remember years ago when he complained about Allardyce, uh, and, and, and I think <laughs> I think West Ham. Um, but... Uh, well, no, that's Klopp, another story. Klopp had a row with Dyche, didn't he, during the... Um, the that would game. have been interesting to know what it was about. Yeah, I don't know. What, what, what was it about? Did, like, did he coat him about play for it? his player dived and got the penalty? Uh, well, fucking check yourself because like you got some of the biggest divers. Dyche might you you got some of the biggest divers in the in the Premier League in mm. the in the in the Liverpool forward line. So mm. check yourself if if it's about that. If it's Dyche appealing for stuff and sticking up for his players, well, I'm with Dyche. I ain't gonna, mm. ain't gonna go there and fucking lay down and die. Do you understand? Who do they think they are? And uh, with regards to whether it was like the Fosbury flop for the penalty or whatever, you know what I mean? Well, have a taste of your own medicine. Mm, yeah. You fucking still are doing the Fosbury flop all over the gaff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. All right. But, um, proves it, but he's like anyone else in football. He's a bad loser. 
Exactly. Yeah, they all seem to get like so that, you, don't they? You know, you smile, you take it with a pinch of salt, you coat them off, you have a pop back. Oh, if I'd have been dosh, I'd have turned around and gone nose to nose with a cunt. Yeah, I've had it on the <laughs> touchline. I did, I did it on the touchline with a fucking pseudo hard man. Uh, Eddie something. Eddie May he used to be Charlton manager. He was at Cardiff. Pseudo hard Because I was a... Yeah, well, I was, I was a puppy, wasn't I? I was fucking 33, 34. Yeah. He's try, he trying to intimidate me and cut me off in front of the players. And then the other one, uh, the Fulham manager. Um... I forgot the, the, the geezer, uh, Bramfoot, Bramfoot, uh, Terry Erlock come in fire eye on um, my player, Kevin Austin, bless him, may rest in peace, wonderful, beautiful human being, um, so I've gone into one and Bramfoot started, and I said, fucking me and you, let's see how tough you are, do you know what I mean? Um, what happened? Did he fancy it or did he melt? He fucking shit yourself, went bright red <laughs> and shit yourself. <laughs> You know what I mean? And the Turner's going to me, calm down, calm down. I said, you could have ended their player's career. I'm not yeah. fucking having that. I'm sticking up for my players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it's <laughs> a shame it weren't, it weren't reciprocated. I was brought up, if you're with someone, um, you, you know, your your mates, your colleagues, your thing, you, you stand shoulder to shoulder with each other. And if we're, if we're even if we're outnumbered, I'll fucking, it won't be me that turns and runs. Well, we spoke about the analogy of being in the trenches before, didn't we? You stick your nut above the parapet and bring it on. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued, though. Just, I mean, I've, the most excited. Just, just this isn't a topic. It is really, uh, linked, but the most excited I've ever been before a football match was uh, at Highbury, Arsenal, Man United during the week. I think it was a Wednesday night, and Keane and Vieira had the row in the in the uh, in the tunnel. Tunnel, yeah. yeah. And All I just thought this. Yeah, you can but, tell by Vieira smirking. He's fucking done it to wind him up. That needle seems to have gone out of the game, really, or, or you don't seem to get that real pure aggression. But it's interesting, um, to just, just in, that, in that anecdote, that it does get to the same level as it would do playing amateur football like I used to do, where, you know, it's like, I'll see you outside type thing. Um, that's great to he's see. Le- he was I like Bradford was leaning on the tunnel like this, with a smirk on his face. My, my player, he's writhing in agony, he got tackled across the fire. I said, is that how you coach? I said, well, you're fucking pub team. Jimmy Hill dug me out the next day in the evening standard. Yeah, who's going to... It's like a row between, uh, uh, like, a, like I said in my book, a fucking fruit and vegetable owner and a politician. Whose integrity are you going to trust? Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you're going to yeah. try. You're going to trust a politician, but I'm the, I'm the fruit and vegetable, but I'm right. Yeah. I'm yeah, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, and, and like I said, we played the, played the equivalent of a fucking pub team. Yeah, beat them 5-2. Wow. Um, right, well, we can't um, talk about other stuff anymore without talking about Frank Lampard. Oh. And oh. yeah, I mean, a lot of questions that I could ask you. Um, some people say he took the job too early. Some say he was too inexperienced. Ask some say it was a harsh job. sacking. Yeah, um, listen, you, listen, what's your you thoughts to, on it? Listen, you got me. You spoke to me earlier and you got me right stoked because I've been ill, I've been poorly, I've missed the chaps, I've missed the podcast, mm-hmm. I've missed football. Uh, you forgot me fun. in that list. Well, no, I said the chaps. I said I've missed the chaps. Everyone, everyone, think of the fucking Grosvenor being shut and all that. We yeah, can't go yeah. there, you know what I mean? But when you yeah. spoke to me earlier, you proper got me stoked. So listen, ask me what you want, mate. Well, I'd might as well just say, what do you think? Give me your analysis of the situation. Uh, well, they get they get, they get paid. Uh, I don't know how many thousands. Um, fantastic career, but it would seem. Um, they get paid thousands to talk bollocks. Carragher going on about he took he maybe took the job too early. Should do what uh, should have done what uh, um, Rooney's done. Have a mentor at, like he's got a derby with McLaren, um, who's got a good reputation of a co- as a coach, a bit like myself. But beyond that, uh, never a fucking manager in a million years. Um, but, but I've got I've got no time for people who hide behind the safe haven of football punditry and they've never had a coach or manager's job. Listen, if Chelsea come knocking, you are, you ask yourself this question. Ask yourself. Ask yourself this question. If Chelsea come knocking and say, we want you to take over, we've got a transfer embargo, this is all by the by, we've got some fantastic kids coming through, blah, 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 you're a club legend, all the rest of it, they've massaged his ego, but forget all that. Even if you're like Joe, Joe Stranger, right? You've got nothing to do with CFC, but you've got a fantastic, unprecedented reputation as a coach. If Chelsea come knocking, what do you do? Yeah, you take it, 100%. You take, you take it, you take yeah. the chance. So what What kind of claptrap and bollocks is Carragher coming out with about, oh, you know, what you do, you give yourself a little thing and do an apprenticeship and all that. It don't happen like that. Football don't happen like that. 
It don't work like that. And it he should know, yeah. after decades in the game at one of the biggest clubs in the world, right? He should know better than anyone how football works. But I've got no time for it when he hasn't put his head above the safe haven parapet of football punditry and been a cultural manager himself. You know what I mean? Until you're in that position, keep your trap shut. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And and, and it's funny. Um, I keep going about it. But but Neville, they were talking about him taking a Valencia job. And he was actually talking about Phil Neville getting a job, Beckham's giving him a job in Miami or whatever. Um, but, oh, Palzac, that is, isn't it? Palzac, yeah. But what, what Neville said was, I think, was right. And I think this really re- relates to, to Lampard is he was inexperienced before he took the Chelsea job. He's taken a Chelsea job. He's got fantastic experience now. He's saying that because he said that about himself with Valencia. Yeah. And, I'll say, I, and I copied it and I said it about myself with regards to my limited um, tenure and, and, and just basically 10 months of firefighting. You are, when you're released, you are then at that particular point, the most experienced you'll ever be. Mm. And and what he's done, he, he would have... He, I hope he's learned a lot, Frank. I'll be honest with you. We could go off piece all over. I can go all over the gaff. I'm looking at it um, 18 months ago now. Uh, my 60th birthday went. I was just, could have gone to Crystal Palace, could have gone to a European game, could have gone to this game, that game. I said, no, I want to go to the West Ham game. I went to the West Ham game at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea nil, West Ham won. One pattern of play. Absolutely, I thought this is this is fucking diabolical. This is these are meant to be top players, and they've just made the same run for 90 minutes. And and then you bring out the thing with regards to uh, you know the, the the same the definition of of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. You've got to have a fault, especially with the people he's played under, and then his coaching staff meant to be revered, Morris and all that. You've got to have more than one pattern of play, right? And then you look at it. Uh, I'm looking at all the ingredients. We're talking about it earlier in the year on the Foot One Sense of podcast with the Don uh, in bracket Shanks chairing the thing, or you chairing it with me. And Lord Hudson, which he gives it all that young Frank, doesn't he, Lord Hudson? And and he's and he's right to a degree. But you're looking at it, you just thinking to myself, I think it got to the stage where at times defensively they looked shambolic. I think at times it looked uh, some of the play was anarchic and uh, without discipline. And, and so all these ingredients, when you look at it, look, Joe, the bottom line is this. Someone asked me for the reason yesterday. And I said, the bottom line is this, right? He's had his years, Grace. He did magnificent. He got a top four finish in an FA Cup final, which under normal circumstances you should expect to win. But uh, Arsenal exploited Chelsea's right-hand side and it never came from the so-called revered coaches on the touchline or the revered legend of a player on the touchline or even the centre-back on that side how to deal with it. I thought it was embarrassing. It was like watching fucking under-13s, right? And uh, Arsenal exploited that side of uh, Chelsea's team and won the Cup final. Right, so now he's into his second year and you think, right, now get a grip, crack the whip, um, bring a bit of discipline, organisation and stamp your personality on it. Because if you look at Frank Lampard, apart from his early misdemeanours, which everyone forgets and I don't, because I can be a vindictive fucker, right? They're going on about me effing and blinding on the telly. What about uh, Morris and the other geezer, Terry, starting fucking trouble? Uh, I won't tell you what they did, but at the Wellington Club in Knightsbridge, everyone forgets it. And then Frank's early Mr. Mr. Main is in Iron Napa. Right? Well, he grew up and he became an absolute model, superlative professional. That's when he's got to say, you know what? And, and I honestly think, to a large degree, uh, a bit like me, much lower down, he suffered from going out of his way to practice humility when I think he should have been much, much more arrogant and placing demands on people because what I saw too nice you you mean it's a nice guy nice guy you know I mean you can't be too nice I guess you got yeah don't get me wrong don't get me wrong without a shadow of a doubt he's uh, very learned and he's no mug and I I, I fucking love him I used to love watching him play right and I met his dad they're proper people right and he's had a magnificent upbringing he's a credit to his family and he's he's a proper he's a proper bloke right Uh, don't get me wrong, there's different ways of being ruthless, right? But what I liked about him earlier in the year, uh, very quickly, let, so I could slip it in, is the way he bristled at press conferences. And he had that, uh, I could see it in him, that truculence, that that, that, that def- posh word for defiance, mm-hmm. um, whereby people started questioning the form and the blips of this and that, where we're, we're, we're trying to integrate five, six new signings, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, I'll be honest, the reasons I gave yesterday, I just think, a club like Chelsea Football Club, 
ninth is unacceptable, especially with the outlay. And I think top four European Champions League qualification is a minimum prerequisite. And he was nowhere near meeting that. And, and, and five defeats in the last eight, I think, rubber stamped it. And, and ironically, when you look at the Luton game, right, everything in the Luton game is, is some Chelsea up this season so far. There was like, um, uh, I've been at the club, I knew the club, I was there for six years at the club, I've been part of it, I've felt it, I've experienced it. You had things like um, uh, an, an arrogance whereby you think, we're going to win this because we're better than these. Player for player, we're fucking light years away, right? And in certain aspects of their play, it showed. But then you look at the flip side, you look at the goal, and you look at the nonsense. Eastick would have called it nonsense. The nonsense football and the nonsense defending that they've been allowed to get away with. And I, I think it, you had the, the goal, actually, for the, goal keep, for the goalkeeper when it went through him. He's like uh, wrists made of fucking shreddies in hot milk. Um, just went straight for him. Ridiculous for a professional 75, 79 million, whatever the fuck. They're never going to get that back. They're never going to get that back. Never in a million years. And she's meant to be the transfer guru. Called him in uh, with, uh, I don't even know what that means. Pet a check performance in, in brackets, performance uh, director or performance uh, uh, coach. Um, and give Frank a tin tack at nine o'clock yesterday morning. Right? When I look at um, when I look at how things came about with regards to when the ball was central, just outside Chelsea's block, the r fighter attempt to press the ball and get the geezer's head down and get within blocking distance, and then he plays it wide, and then you have got the thirty-three running out. Um, might as well been, a bit, might as well been as far away from the geezer on the ball as I am from you now. And then when the geezer puts the thing, puts the, the, the cross or the thing into the box, he turns his back on it. What happened? I mean, I said on, on, I was livid. I mean, I said on Twitter, I mean, if I'm a coach, I'll be screaming a, a fucking player to get right in his face, get his head down, stop the cross coming in. You've got players now, they're more worried about their thousand pound tattoos and their fucking straight bleached teeth and their beautifully coiffured hair. And they, they ain't even getting their shorts dirty. What the fuck's going on? Right. And, and I look at it. And I say to myself, every single unit needs help. What's, what's got to happen now? It's just the geezer's got to come in and he's just got to give out a cacophony of decent, this, if it's this Tuchel, uh, however you say his name, a cacophony of decent information and coaching. Because I'm what, I, what I'm fearful of, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, he's the best striker in the club at this moment in time, Tammy Abrahams, homegrown. The other geezer started off all right. Someone said, how would you steal Werner? I'd steer him towards being a bit more selfish and sharing the load and actually dictating and bossing to Abrams, do your share in the channels as well as me, because he's finding himself in the channels, creating chances for Abrahams, right? Yeah. Um, so he actually wants to be the one that's in the box. Then you look, probably the best department or compartment in the team is the midfield. Gilmore, I would build a team around him. I don't care how young he is. I'd make him captain and build a team around him. Mount, he needs a cattle product, his ass, and strong words from someone like me say, forget the fucking histrionics. Like when the goal went in, Kepper is a, he's a Lionel. The geezer's had an absolute Western since he's been at the club, right? But all this, like, and all this, you know what I mean? Making out to the crowd, you give a fuck, and all that, and like, ah, oh, he's letting us down. Been there, seen it, done it, got the T-shirt, the fucking vest, the tracksuit top, and the sweat top, and the tracksuit bottoms. Trust me, I've played in teams like that, and one of them was at Chelsea. Oh, I ain't my fault. Mm. Oh, I ain't my fault. Fuck yeah, it. Well, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. What you got to do, you got to rally around each other. Because that, that, yeah. that, as a captain or future captain, that's, that don't engender uh, togetherness and and uh, a nah. unit and, and, and being hard to break down. Reese James. Um, I see what Alan means now, Hudson, because I had to think about when we've done Chelsea's best ever 11, I said, well, I want my defenders to defend. I think, other than the last couple of years, because he's got older, since he set foot in the place, when I say the place, I mean the Premier League, Asper Laquette has been an absolute model defender and professional. And if you were doing something to highlight how to defend, uh, from taking it from a grid to 44,000 at Stamford Bridge, he would be it, right? Um, but he's gone on about, Lord Hudson's gone on about Reese James. I see what he means now. But what, happened, what what you need now is you need to take it to the next level. He could, Reese James, if he's coached properly, could be England's right back for the next 10 years. Mm. What he needs to do, he needs to mix up his game going forward and needs to get his head right and check himself, sort himself out defensively. 
And that comes with help on the training field. So I'm looking at it. Right, Joe, you've got Chilwell, good signing. You've got Thiago, you've got a uh, stopgap. Uh, struggling for centre of defence, who well, I thought Tomori was a fantastic prospect. Then you've got Rudiger, then you, they need drilling. You've got Erman, the German, they all need drilling, right? Then you've got Reese James, fantastic, right? So you've got the makings of a fundamentally thing. You've got Gilmore, I'd build a team around him. You've got Mount, sort the histrionics out, uh, sort yourself out, just worry about playing your proper game and being part of a unit, uh, or you can fuck off. That's what I'd say. Mm. Um, you've got Pulisic, who's sort of like, you know, Last Pulisic season was got, top, yeah, top yeah, job. Yeah, what he's, Pulisic is like, he looks like to me like he's trying to um, avoid injury. And and what he does is, and, and the best way to avoid injury is to totally reverse the game he's playing. Um, because what, he, what he's doing is uh, he's getting in good areas and instead of moving the ball quickly or making a decision to either cross or shoot or move the ball quickly to someone better placed, he's drawing the challenge. Then he goes down like he's been shot. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, th- th- this was part of the Wilshire thing with regards to me going on about if I could have 30 minutes on a coaching field with Jack Wilshire years ago, right from the off. He, 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 Wilshire would have had a longer career and it is unbelievable that he's still available and no one snapped him up. Right? But it is what it is because of his track record. Mm. But someone watching over him like me who could have nurtured his natural talent, what I would have said was, I'm finding a way to get the team up as a unit Right, 15, 20 yards further up the field, right? Because I'm telling you now, and I've said this before, I've said it on previous podcasts, it doesn't matter if it's me, it doesn't matter if it's you, it doesn't matter if it's Don Shanks, probably not Hudson, but at the end of the day, you'll take a yellow card for the team. If he's getting the ball just on the edge of his own D yeah, off the yeah. center backs or the goalkeeper, you know as well as I do, you'll take a yellow card, you'll whack him right up in the air, hence the fucking Weetabix ankles, because he was drawing challenges in the wrong areas of the football field. Now, if me or you are defending him on the edge of our own D, we're not going to be so uh, anxious to, to have a whack no. at him. We're no. going to have to stay on You're our feet and defend yeah. properly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, uh, that's the way I think he should have been handled. Well, I think he, Pulisic is coming into that category at the moment with one or two others. Yeah. Um, I, what did you think of... Let's maybe put yourself in in Lampard's shoes. You come in, you're, you're, you're a Chelsea legend, which you are anyway. I wish I could. Oh. But, no, but you come I'd into love, the I'd club. I'd give a fucking the, body part. But you were, you know, a young manager. You know, she yeah. just mentioned before, 33, 34, whatever, you know. Yeah, I was, yeah. Just finished playing. Big, big, well, you know, big job. And he's brought in as his assistant, Jody Morris. Now, I know he was a youth team coach and I know he was, you know, doing well with the club. To me... If I was in that situation, I'd want, like what you're saying about Rooney and someone like Steve McLaren, someone that's got the experience that can just advise. I'd want someone you don't, to advise. Yeah, but Joe, you don't listen. You don't know what's going on behind the scene. No. It might have been. It might have been. It might have been economics. They, they might have wanted to promote someone from within to pro. Mm. Listen, I'm going to do a bit in my second book about the pure arrogance of this place. The pure. Chelsea. The, yeah, the sheer arrogance. Of it. This is about the uh, child sex abuse allegations. And now I was contacted by every media outlet and newspaper going. Um, as like someone said to me, Sits, I always enjoyed your company. I always thought you was a great lad. And I always saw you as in our age group, quite patriarchal. Well, what happened was all these other footballers were contacted and they were steered in my direction. Then I got phone calls and texts from someone called Jan Pickles, QC. Great name, isn't it? Mm. Like Rumpo with a Bailey. Right, <laughs> Jan Pickle, who were representing Chelsea Football Club um, and sent letters, CC, Bruce Buck and whoever and whoever, and they want me, which I'm going to explain, that they wanted me to do a safety thing uh, for Chelsea youth, youth team players. And you know what? They wouldn't even give me a day's wages in lost takings from the cab. She said, I can meet you at home. I said, well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't really want you in my home. I, I, I goes, I'll do it on neutral ground, this and that, but it's going to take a big chunk of my day. I'm going to have to write the day off. Well, maybe we can work towards giving you 25 quid expenses. I'm putting all this in the book. The sheer fucking arrogance of the place, right? Well, with all the wheelers and dealers and, and movers and shakers up, up the thing, one of them is the Russian bird, right? Um, it was meant to be the chief recruitment. Well, um, I think there's an error of, error of resignation about a couple of three things. One is, if they're going to try and shave a pound note, it's going to be behind the scenes. So you don't know. Morris might have been promoted and Frank might have been told, this is who you're getting. 
because what we want to do, we want to utilize his contract to get value for money as best mm. we can. Mm. Right. Mm. Um, I don't know. No one knows. Right. It might have been his ability. It might have been that he was recommended. It might have been, it might be that he's highly thought of. Although I fit, I would think that there's. Well, more... hold on. He was at Derby, wasn't he? I was thinking. Was it, was it, was he not at Derby with him? What, with Lampard? Yeah. When Lampard was there? Yeah. I think he was. Yeah, so so maybe they've built up a working relationship and they give Frank the uh, the green light on that with regards to letting him have a long side. It's all it's all speculation on our part. But, but and what would you like though? Anyway. What would you have done? Um, Sorry to interrupt. What would you would would you have liked a young up and coming coach like Jody Morris or someone like his uncle, um, Harry Redknapp, who's got more experience than any manager, you know, in alive today probably. You know, I. How, how how would it? Have, what would you have liked? Yeah, well, I think that's a given. I think he would have. I think I think Frank, I think it's naive of anyone to think that Frank wouldn't have been on the front of his dad and his uncle. Mm. I'd say, yeah. What do you think with this? What do you think with that? Mm. What do you think I should do? What would you do here? Da, da, da. Um, I'm talking from a personal point of view with uh, quite a lot of regret. Um, I could probably have done with a mentor. I could probably I could probably have done with someone who felt close enough to me. And enough of a friend to say, may put his arm across and say, whoa, whoa, hold on. Mm. No, re relax, calm down. Yeah, advise I, I, yeah. I knew I could coach, I knew I could organise, I knew I could improve players um, and uh, give players careers, right? Um, whether the majority of the players were receptive and up to that level or not, I don't know. That's open to question and debate. I've, I know the answer. It's up, for other, up to other people to work it out. Mm. Um especially with the previous incumbent running it like fucking uh, an anarchic butlins, right? But at the end of the day, um, I, I would imagine now with the benefit of hindsight, uh, Frank could possibly could have done with, he could have possibly had done with maybe a bit, a bit of experience advice, but it, it, all the people around him are people like Czech Morris, they're people he played with. The other yeah. guys who I don't even know, Chris Jones, his name is, I don't even know who he is. He was the other, um, member, of staff. He was the other member of staff they got rid of. What do you think he'll go on to good things or great things, Lampard? Do you think this is a just a blip? You know, well, I I thought, blip. it's not even no, a blip. Never, Management never always is bad, no. doesn't it? Really, so he always yeah. getting sacked. Well, they said they said he had a fifteen million pound three year deal, and he's going to get weighed on half of that. How bad that? Yeah, yeah that's football yeah. now. That's football now. Um, it's a reward for failure culture, but I don't think Frank's about that. It, it, it probably before he even took the job, he got more money than the coin. Mm. Um, I know he's in, I know through the grapevine, he's been into other things and he's put his dad in charge of stuff. And he's done all right away from football. Forget that. I think he was all about the football. I think that his first year at Chelsea and the bit that he did on his CV at Derby, I think it'll hold him in good stead. I think his experience with some of these mercenaries will hold him in good stead. Mm. My personal opinion is, I think he's in the top two. Uh, front runners for experience, through know-how, through knowledge, through a safe suburban accent to be England manager. Yeah. And someone said, someone said to me, what's his accent got to do with it? <laughs> uh, Brent, so, he? People are so fucking naive, aren't they? With regards to, I was, I was, I thought people would just take, would take you as they find you, they'd appreciate your honesty and, and your straight talking and um, maybe embrace it. Maybe embrace, the fact that, maybe, maybe embrace the fact that sometimes I was too brutally honest, but, um, you know, take that on as part of a, uh, you know, contract of friendship with regards to whatever club you're employed at. Yeah, he might, he might you know, as he, he might he might be a bit of a lunatic, but he's our lunatic, that type of, type of thing. Yeah. But people don't realise they have, have, have big uh, thing images in the game, Joe. El Tell was a bit of a wheeler dealer type, wasn't he? He had that little bit of a... Jack the Lad type. Yeah, and I think, I think it, yeah, and I think what happened is, what probably what happened is, um, it probably muddied the waters. With, and Harry Redknapp too has got, got a thing as a wheeler dealer. And um, knowing what I know, I could say things on here, but I don't want anything to get too litigious. But at the end of the day, um, probably someone like someone like Terry Venables, um, and he got Oddle. He's from from Arlo, which is part of the East East End overspill. The two two of the greatest countries this country's ever had, and and you know we've never we've never looked forward since since mm. Venables should, for my my opinion, he should have been a coach's mentor and run the FA top to bottom, 
but everyone thing is off the field activities. This is what I said about the duplicity and hypocrisy of football. Um, I've had my mouth run away with me. They've dug Glenn out over, over his beliefs. He should have kept his trap shut and just stuck to specifics, which is football, which is why you're there. So the two greatest coaches the country's had since we won the World Cup in 66, right? We, we've treated them like shit. And they've gone out of the game, never to be seen again. And then their knowledge has gone with them. You know what I mean? It's, it's criminal. Nothing short of criminal. Um, <laughs> where Frank's concerned, I don't think that'll happen. What, no. he's got to do, though, what he's got to do, though, he's got to make sure that the um, whatever level, the next project, is something that's winnable. Hmm. You understand what I'm right. trying to say? Yeah, it's all right. He's got to make the right decision. Because there'll yeah. be a lot of people after him, I'll imagine. He'll be in the frame for a lot of jobs. But... Um, and I was going to ask, because I think it leads us as a nice segue onto Oli at Man United, because I think there's a question mark as to whether or not a club in the Premier League would want Oli as a manager. That's how of a crazy situation it is for someone like Oli to be the Man United manager, because I think he just didn't have the same, didn't have the level of experience to be a Man United manager. There are, sim- there are similarities between, between him and Lampard, but whatever the the, the lack of experience he had, um, he's really turned it around there. Yeah, yes. He's turned yeah. it around and uh, they're playing well. Peter Eustace said something to me once and he was right. And it's, it, is, it is, that is the case. It's football. Um, he said to me, I don't know what way you've, you know, he said, you've got, he said, I love the way you're, he said, you're very specific. You're very well organized. Uh, you're on the ball. You've got a sharp eye. He said, but when I'm gone, he said, I don't know really with regards to your where your future lies. He said, you can maybe stay here if you want, but just bear this in mind, he says to me, he bear this in mind. He said, very few coaches can pick and choose right, where and when they work and what club they work at, right? He said, and don't take this the wrong way, he said, but I think you come into that category. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, look, and this is that era. He said, Don Al, he said, he can have the pick of what jobs offered to him. Terry Venables can have the pick of what jobs. Are. He said, the rest of us, he said, we have to take what's offered, right? Now with that in mind and tying in with what you're saying, I think maybe apart from his own country or maybe a little French club, I'm struggling to think where Ollie could manage other than Man United, where he's absolutely revered as a consequence of the 1999 treble um, as a player. I'm struggling to think where else he could manage. Yeah. Really, seriously. Um, what I will say is, I think I think his style's been exemplary. He's yeah. nice and chilled. He's got a few of the old firm back, like Phelan. He's got, like, um, a, a, a revered top-draw ex-player, Carrick. And um, I think, I think like, like I said, when they all call him for his head on the chopping block, I said, whoa, 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 you don't know this, you don't know that, you've got to worry thing, you've got to think of that. He's put that in place. I think that's been superb. He's handled that well. And then he, he's turned it around. You know what I mean? Anyone a fucking think I knew what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, all you-, you can do is keep bagging the drum, John. That's all you can that's do. Can- yeah, that's all you can do, yeah. yeah. Um, and march, march to my own beat. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, it, it, so on the Man United thing, then, is there any... Looking at the games, I don't know how much time and, 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 and ability you've had to... To, to look at some of their games. Yeah, no, I've, I've looked at a good few. You know, looked at a good few. What do you think he's done? What, what, what have you seen anything that that he's um, identified, or you can see that there's an improvement? Whether it's yeah, defense, without a doubt. Where, yeah, yeah and you can see it's kind of yeah. Yeah, Fernandez was a, Fernandez and Cavani were two were two masterstrokes because straight away Cavani's what it is like when you've when, when he's been when you're that well travelled. When you're that established, when you're that magnificent a player and goal scorer and you've won a few pots, straight away, it elevates things to a new level. Mm. Right? And then like your Martials, your your, your Rashfords, um, the, the hot prospect, who, who's the kid on Greenwood. the right? Greenwood, who, who got up to no good with, with England. Da, da, da. He, he's got his nut down again, 10 out of 10, been a model professional. He's probably had a telling off or a talking to. Get a grip. You've got the world at your feet, right? Have a look at yourself. Check yourself. Right. You understand what I'm telling you? Right. Bump. Fuck it. Now let's move on. Let's crack on. Show, show him what you can do. He's been outstanding. Well, what, the point being, someone like Cavani will just like elevate it to a new level. Yeah. Then yeah. you look at then you look at the injection when he's slowly been eased in. Sub. Mm-hmm. 
little under so half. So managed a game. well. He's really yeah. managed him well. Little, yeah, yeah. Little, like sub 15, 20 minutes. Little under half, half an hour. Little over half an hour. Little under a half. Then just over a half. Then an hour. Then you look at him the other day, 90 minutes, tear, tearing around like a 22 year old. You know, mm. fantastic. And Fernandez, obviously, um, always remember him. Uh, what you said, Bobby Robson, not just about signing good players, it's about signing good people, good human mm. beings. Mm. Fernandez, for me, looks to be like he falls well and truly, even with blankets around him, well and truly snugly into that category. Yeah. Absolute yeah. top draw, uh, trainer, performer, conscientious, places demands on himself and his teammates. You can't, that's, that's the football, that's what football is all about. Mm. Not fucking, oh, fuck this, I'm going to look after number one. This is what happened at Chelsea, Joe. This is what's happened at Chelsea. You've had you've had a little bit of anarchy. You've had a little bit. See, I don't get that. I, I, I'm I'm really really sorry. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I, I I can't comprehend it. This in inverted commas losing the dressing room. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Um, I played under managers, intellectual pygmies, coaching pygmies, physical pygmies. Um, Fucking nasty, vindictive bastards who kept me down. Other people who treated me like shit. And all right, maybe that's why like George Petty sticks out at Mill was the best manager, the greatest football man I ever played under. It's that was serendipity, and then the rest of it was bittersweet. Because what I did is I totally ignored the fact that someone was uh, at a European Cup winner's medal because he was fucking useless and he used and abused me, right? Uh, Frank Clark. Uh, but you still put your hundred percent in every week. The point I'm making, you what you do, you knuckle down, you train. Uh, then Peacock at Gillingham, I had a magnificent first two years. He ain't my fucking fault. We just out and pro- missed out on promotion. It's the fact that you couldn't get a decent forward into the club, and we we we, we never had enough goals in the side. We had two great wingers, we had a great midfield, we had a great back four, and a decent goalkeeper. So, and all of a sudden, he breaks the side up, shuffles the pack. And he buys people and gets people in for the sake of getting them in. But at the same time, keeps me poor on the same money for four years. People go, are oh, you angry and bitter? I say, yes, right. Now now, <laughs> now what? Yeah. Yeah, so what? Now what? Of course I'm fucking angry and bitter. You know, uh, uh, one of the greatest things in life, Joe, and football is realisation. Right? Now, what I'm saying to you is this. And it happened at Chelsea, right? I don't get it. Losing the dressing room malarkey, right? What happens is you knuckle down, you train how you should train, you play, how you should try, how you should play, regardless of your relationship and how you feel about the manager. You understand? The manager... Um, no, I do so understand that. I do understand that from your, in, from your point of view. But is it is it not fair to say that most people aren't like you? Probably, but I, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like I said, though, it always brings me back to him, Robson, about signing good people. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day... If everyone gets on 22 players, the manager, the coaching staff, the masseurs, the physio, that's fantastic. But I'll guarantee in any football club, rarely does that happen. So then what does it come down to? Mm, desire. It, come, it comes down to just desire and worrying about your own performance, regardless mm. of your personal feelings towards the geezer. You've got your own losing the dressing room. I don't understand because purely, uh, purely uh, from the simple point of view, I've got my own pride. I've got my name. I've got my family name. I've got, I've got my like my wife and children. Uh, even at small clubs, you don't, you don't want to be mugged off by your opposite number. You nah. understand? No, you don't no. want to. You don't want to. You want to show the supporters you care. You want to show that you, uh, your professional pride turns into good performance. So I, honestly and truly, I, 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 I don't understand. But I think where he's concerned, Ollie, because uh, I've gone off piece slightly. I just think like where where he's because I think he's handled it magnificently. And and it, it's like. Um, Less is more. He's got that little, that that gentle touch. Yeah. You understand? It's sprinkle. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Nuanced. Um, he also seems to have handled Pogba well because probably, what, six weeks ago, his agent came out and said he wants to leave. And, you know, he was clearly the dissenting voice in the change room or, you know, he weren't happy. But he hasn't completely sidelined him. He's played him sometimes out of position. Pogba's done a job. Pops up last week with a, with a really good goal, you know. He's, he's actually seemingly handled him very well without a major issue arising, which it could have quite easily done and could have disrupted the season. Well, I spoke quickly about Frank needing a mentor. Players need mentors as well. Mm. Um, and, 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 and I've been accused. You can't win, Joe, right? You, at the end of the day, 
someone, a couple of people dug me out about talking outside of me remit. You know, I'm a cab driver. And then before that, I was a footballer, manager, coach, whatever. And um, I've got strong opinions on um, politics. So I say my piece. You understand what I mean? But you can't win because they say, well, like, he's, he's, what does he know? He's talking outside of his remit. He's just a cab driver, blah, blah, blah. But you see and you gather information, you absorb information, you read, you listen, you look. And all it needed was someone on Pogba's behalf to pull him to one side and say, listen, um, if you're on Blob, you could be in a World eleven as a, as a mid centre midfield player. You're at one of the world's biggest clubs, if not the club, uh, the biggest club in the world, Man United. Where do you go from here? Right. So if I'm you, what you do, you just you knuckle down, you let your football do do the talking. Yeah. Your, tr your training will get you in the side and then you let your football do the talking. And if I'm you, I'm just advising you as a friend or I'm advising you as a coach, Mick Fielder, or I'm advising you as a manager, uh, Ollie, or, you know, just a pal from back in France. Right. Tell this Portuguese waiter to keep his trap shut. Right. If he don't, sign off on him. Pay him, pay him his gratuity and give him a fuck off tablet. Right? Because <laughs> be, because at the end of the day, no, Joe, this is the truth. This is the truth. Mm. It's one of East Stick sayings again. Right? And this is where I know for sure, talking from a personal point of view, there's instances where I did let myself down. And the chances that I had, like I said earlier, I didn't realise there were chances until they'd floated by. Right? Yeah. You are... So just stop. Can I just stop you on that? Sorry, to, I know you were just about to say something, but is that what you missed? Someone saying to you, "This is your opportunity. This is it. It ain't going to come. It, ain't, it probably ain't going to happen again." Mm. Is that? It's just. It was just to clarify. Is that? Yeah. Because because yeah. otherwise you don't well, know. It was the best. It was the best coach. It was the best coach in the. It was the best coach. It was Jeff first, Bobby Gould, and Brian Eastick, and uh, he was the best coach in the club. And I was at Loggerheads with him. I, I was like, um, that's a fascinating point, John, a rebellious trappy 18, 19 year old. And, uh, I got, I got sat down in the bath at White Hart Lane. Um, uh, we beat Spurs there in the football combination. David, A. he said, they think the world sits, obviously they've made your captain the reserves. And he started telling me all the do's and don'ts. I got pulled aside by Ray Wilkins, all the do's and don'ts. I got pulled aside by Ronnie Harris, all the do's and don'ts. Do you think I fucking listened? That's why, that's why I ended up in the third division at Millwall. One of, one of quite a few ingredients, right? But the bottom line is this, right? Easter used to say, you are the best advert for your own career. You you are the boss. You are the navigator. You are the manager of your own career, yeah. right? And this is where I think the renaissance of people like Stones, people like Maguire and people like Pogba, you've got to doff your cap to them. Yeah, and, and it might have been it, it might have been all it needed, Joe, was just someone, just to, a, a mate, just to tug them, who they fuck about with on a basketball court or go to a restaurant with, Listen, you're my friend. You've been my friend for 20 years. Da, 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 I can't let this go. I've got, I've got to tell you straight. Mm. And, and that, that might have been all it needed. Or a mental within the club. You know what I mean? Or, I, or, or Ollie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what I said. It could have been yeah. Ollie. could have been Mick Phelan. could have been Carrick. Yeah, could have been yeah, a power yeah. away from football. Yeah, that's it's all it takes, It's interesting that, isn't it? It's interesting. You know, you, you get these, you know, tactics and strategies and blueprints and PowerPoint presentations. Sometimes it's just a tap on the shoulder or... Yeah. Arm around, you know, just yeah, you know, just yeah. a little word in the ear. Which well, I don't he said, know, he but said it's that, interesting. He said that he said that about uh, me and Turner, didn't he? Cockrell. He said we we could have been a could have been a good uh, good doublet. He said um, the, it, it was nice of him to say that I was I was a good coach, very good coach. Mm. He said, and I just think like the other side of it should have been left to Chris Turner. Mm. You know what I mean? So that, that, that that's football. Yeah, that's football. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you if you got if you got uh, if you got the package. If you've got the package, then you've cracked it, haven't you? Mm. You're, you're in, like, Jose territory, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and at, at the end of the day, listen, it's all waffle and bullshit because it comes down to coaching, it comes down to playing habits. That's all it comes down to. Playing, it comes down to coaching, it comes down to playing habits, it comes down to uh, uh, what I said to uh, someone uh, the other day on Twitter, a bit of momentum and reliability. That's what it comes That's football. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. They're, they're, they're like four out of five major keys. Uh, with regards to your performance as a player, and um, the, uh, all, all the left, all the rest of it is peripheral. That's the, you know, bottom line. I'll never forget saying he said Warnock, and he's right, really, what he said. So he, I suppose you try and handle people how you, how you, uh, how they come across, how you see fit. He said, look, let's let's call it what it is. He took them to, um, I think he might have been at Middlesbrough. Anyway, it's funny. I was watching it on the thing. Um, might have been football focus. 
and, and maybe that's why he's done so well. Um, he said, look, let's face it. He said, um, footballers at the end of the day, they're just big kids. You know what I mean? So what you're saying is that they're, 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 they're like, I realised it too late, but quite a few of them, the men, in, like I did my team, Hild, a man, amongst men, Austin, a man, Bellamy, a man, Purse, a young man, Endon, a clever man, um, Cockrell, a man, um, Bogey, very much a man amongst men, Westy, a man, well, what have I named now? Seven, eight players? It's not enough. No, right? no. But, but so, but, but, but you realise, like, the, the rest around you, um, like he said, um, Neil Warnock, he said they're, they're, they're like, they're like... Um, Immature. Yeah, he said they're like, they're like big kids. Football's like big kids. So he's saying you're dealing with, like, you know, boys in a men's body. Mm. So, so, you, so you've got to tap into that part yeah, of... Yeah, that side thing. thing that, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right. Well, I think that's probably a good time to to stop, John. I think I think we've uh, I think you've found your voice again, which is good to hear. That's good. Yeah. Now you got me you're stoked. Back. I was looking you're forward to seeing to you bang. tonight. Good and ditto. I'm glad. I'm so glad you're back and healthy and uh, you know, uh, raring to go again because um, it's, it's it's just great to see. And I love having these chats. And hopefully other people do. And uh, as always, you know, please um, please message us. Please DM us on on, on the Twitter handle. Um, I think. Our, our personal handles are underneath this. Obviously, John's got loads of followers. Um, reach out because we want to hear your feedback and hopefully you appreciate the fact we're back. John's back, fit and healthy, and we move on. And hopefully next time, next week, we do it, John. You're, yeah. You know, probably not putting on that much more weight, but maybe a little, filling out a little maybe, bit. Maybe a little bit Yeah, in the vital areas. A little bit, yeah. little bit more, <laughs> je ne sais quoi, as I say. <laughs> All right, well, uh, well, thanks, everyone. And um, yeah, well, it's goodbye for me and it's uh, goodbye for you, John. Cheers, mate. Good night to everyone. Thank you. Cheers.